Hi, welcome. I'm Nira Berry, the Happiness Coach, and your host of Happy and Healthy, where we explore all the many ways of keeping you feeling happy and healthy. And remember to stay tuned to the end to my Good to Know segment, where I've always got something good to share with you. And so today we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn all about the different ways that we can be creative and really express ourselves through art. So please welcome my guest today, Glenn Kessler. Thank you for being here. And uh, Glenn is a master artist at Artists and Maker Studio, which is like a really unique space uh, for artists in Rockville. And you're also the founder and director of the Compass Atelier, which is a unique art school, which is something new that's taking the area by storm. And, and it's really wonderful because you're permitting aspiring artists to realize their dreams. How wonderful. Thank you, Nira. <laughs> and that is absolutely the goal. And thank you so much for having me on today to be able to speak to your audience oh. about what's happening with art and art education in our area. Yeah, I, 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 I feel it's really strong. It's, it's a really important part of, uh, of happiness and living really a, a, a good life. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit um, about the Artisan Maker Studio? I mean, I... I Actually, up until recently, you hadn't heard about it. Oh, well, shame on you. We're, <laughs> we're only about five years old oh my God. Uh, as an entity and still getting the word out, of course. Uh, yeah. Good things take time uh, to, to grow and nurture. Uh, but Artisan Maker Studio is a really fantastic mega complex of art studios. Uh, we have um, uh, approximately 140 resident artists who are making artwork in all different disciplines across wow. our two different venues. Uh, we have uh, rotating gallery exhibitions change every month and each month we start wow. off with a new first Friday uh, 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 exhibition opening with uh, wine and cheese and all the artists in attendance uh, and then we also have some larger studio spaces that folks like myself run uh, classrooms or other type of mixed-use spaces uh, uh, for other arts programming. Wow that's amazing and uh, so, you know, I, I understand that this is something that's been around for a few years, but why was it created to begin with? Was there like a need for this? I think so. Yeah. Uh, arts has always been strong in this area, but uh, I know I had been making artwork in my basement and, oh, uh, wow. you know, had not been interacting with a lot of uh, other artists in the community, uh, didn't have that uh, collaboration and that connectivity to a thriving uh, arts community. Uh, and so many people were like myself were looking for that connection to others. Uh, art is in some ways a, a solitary activity. You know, we love to spend time alone at our easel or, uh, or workbench. Um, but the creative process is much nurtured when we have others to bounce ideas off of and just have, you know, happenstancical, you know, kind of moments uh, engender that next idea that, uh, that that's going to feed the next painting or the next project for you. And, and is there like a wide variety of artists there? Like, can you Absolutely. mention some of them? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I myself am a painter and, yeah. uh, and I'd say there's quite a few painters and drawers, you know, some of those traditional, you know, kind of uh, two-dimensional crafts, but we've got jewelers, we've got sculptors, we've got people working in fabric, paper, silk, all different disciplines. And it's really fun to run into one another. We have a number of common spaces where we can eat lunch together or just share some, some you know, discussions. Uh, it's, it's really a fun and creative place to, to walk into every day. So can the general public walk in there? And Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. I, I feel like that would be so inspiring for me. Like I'm not like any artist, but I like to dabble and just have a little fun, you know. Yes. Uh, and I get inspired when I see other people doing it. So Absolutely. you can walk in and see it? Yeah, we keep uh, open hours Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, yeah. And uh, during those hours, the front doors are open and anyone can walk in and certainly see the exhibitions that are on view. Yeah. Those galleries are always open. Uh, and then in terms of resident artists, we don't demand that our resident artists are present during those yeah. working hours. We encourage it, but people have their own schedules that they like to keep. Some night owls, some people who work weekends, and some people have full-time jobs who can only paint it uh, at night. Uh, wow, so, so it's such a wonderful service, oh, actually, great. to the community. Absolutely. Yeah, there's so many people who I know wouldn't otherwise be able to carve out a space in the home to do their craft, yeah. and they have that facility here. Yeah, because I imagine, I don't know if you have any, let's say, uh, people that work with glass, like you have to have a kiln yes. and things like that. Do you have that as well? We do, yeah. Wow. Quite a few of the artists have have small kilns in their spaces. Yeah. And uh, and there was a time in, uh, you know, a few years ago when we had a 
number of potters who had a massive kiln uh, and they were working. I think they set up their own location yeah. uh, after, uh, after this and that kiln has gone, but the door is always open for those kinds of creative activities. That's wonderful. That's right. And you said that you yourself are a painter? Yes. Do you, do you specialize in a type of, uh, do you like, do you do portraits or do you, what, what a little bit of everything, in? actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, I you know I, I uh, am well, trained <laughs> classically, yeah, so okay. I can paint figures, landscapes, still lifes, uh, really, really any and everything, and I enjoy a little bit uh, of of each discipline. My work skews more realistic, uh, and uh, and I do have uh, a kind of a practice of working on pet portraits. I, I think the pet portraits are are, are pretty oh, good. Oh yeah, had that's about a great two hundred uh, uh, pet portraits out there, including Caesar Milan, the dog. Whisper oh, has, really? uh, has one of his uh, oh. uh, departed dog daddy. Um, I also work on landscapes. I Do you uh, use like oil? Or? I use oils. Oh, yes. well, yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems like the. You know, I've never used oil. I just feel like, you know, acrylic's just easier, you know, because you have to let oil dry and all that. So. I think that's a common perception, but I actually think that oils, if you get a good foundation, are easier, especially if you're painting realistic things, which I am, figures yeah. and, and dogs and, and landscapes, because that longer drying time allows you to blend. And of course, we oh. aren't composed of sharp, faceted edges. So if you're trying to, you know, soften a cheek or soften yeah. a forehead, it's good to have that. You have that ability. So, um, so tell me about the Compass Atelier because that's the the educational piece that's there. It's yes. on location there, right? Yeah, that's my baby. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I set up the Compass Atelier almost exactly the same time as Artisan Makers was okay. formed. This was just a perfect marriage. Uh, Judith Hartsong had the idea to create Artisan Makers, yeah. this wonderful thriving art center. I had the idea after fifteen years of teaching at universities and eight years of teaching in the community to start my own school. Uh, I oh. thought I could uh, better serve uh, students uh, in, in their artistic goals through the creation of my own school uh, with, with our own unique program. Uh, and so five years ago, I created the Compass Atelier. Wow, that, that's that's so wonderful that you did that. And so, if somebody wants to attend, like, do you need any prior experience? Like, you know, uh, do do, you, do do I know you have a wide variety of different classes that you offer. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. We do have a wide variety yeah. of classes. Uh, a lot of people have never drawn a stick figure before, yeah. but want to see if they have some artistic talent. And so, we have an absolute open door policy for people who want to start. Of course, you know, a lot of people think, well, I should already know how to do something before sending up for class? Nonsense. That's yeah. why we have classes. So that you can learn something, yeah. become better than you were before at that activity. Uh, so we've got uh, classes that run seasonally, that uh, meet weekly for just two and a half, three hours. Those are great for getting your toe in the water. Painting yeah. from photographs classes, I call painting through the lens. Um, and so a lot of people get their start in that class. Uh, but the backbone of what built the Compass Atelier is something called the Master Artist Program. That's okay. a program where uh, after teaching for the 15 years at really top art schools in the country, Maryland Institute College of Art, George Mason and GW, I found that students in those uh, degree programs were being overcharged and underserved. Mm -hmm. uh, many were graduating without the skills that they needed to be professionals in their field. I'll never forget an anecdote I heard when I was a senior at MICA back in so-and-so. Uh, <laughs> and my faculty advisor told me, uh, and to a whole class of us, um, your graduating class, the 5% of you will be making art a decade from now. Will oh, it be wow. you? Well, they were using it as a motivating tool. Yes, it'll be me, of course, not them, not them. But what they were really saying was 95% of you haven't been trained, haven't you know, arrived at yeah. the point where you have a professional practice. If you'd have told that to me at age 17, 18, and my parents that you know, I was going to spend $200,000 on a four-year education in the prime of my life, and you were going to give me a 5% chance of success, yeah. I'd have told you something. It's a family show, so I'm not going to say yeah. what I would have said. But you know, what, what I thought I could do is better uh, than that. So I spent about six months pulling together from uh, old times uh, in the 1900s when art was taught in sequential order, oh. uh, the lessons that artists needed to know, combine them with contemporary ideas that uh, someone would need today, like social media, you know, how to, how to develop a website, oh. the business strategies. And what resulted was a three-year part-time program that 
taught more information than six years of full-time undergrad and graduate school is teaching. Wow. That's the master artist program. So it sounds like you really culled you know, the, the best of the best and put it all together there. We trim the fat and yeah. every lesson, every week, you're learning one new applicable skill mm. that builds on the previous and builds to the next. It's amazing, in three years of part-time work, it's four hours in class once a week, and then 10 additional hours outside of class. So this is just for painting, though? It is painting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's my specialty, and yeah. that's, that's the, uh, the arena that I can disrupt. That's the arena I have the most uh, familiarity with yeah. and, and was able to see firsthand from both student side and teacher side uh, that there were flaws in the system. Yeah, so especially since you were working before as uh, teaching at the university level, yeah. and so you knew what the flaws were and what, what we can really benefit from. Is, because there's so many artists that don't know how to promote themselves or what they need to do, and so that's the... I always found it odd that uh, artists were trained in art school on their artistic craft, but yeah. never taught the business side. As if these introverted people who enjoy being alone, yeah. telling themselves, oh, this is wrong with the piece, this is wrong with the piece, over and over yeah. again. As if they were just naturally gonna know how to stand in front of a crowd and, and speak confidently about their work. Right, and, yeah. that's true. Like, it's like it's that the business lot. stuff we need the most, I think. So, but, so with this, you don't necessarily get like a university degree or anything like that, but... Uh... You know, yeah, we don't to be offer, an artist, you don't really need well, it, right? That's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, you know, when, when you find beautiful artwork that you yeah. connect with in a gallery and you say, oh, I want to take that one home yeah. with me, do you then ask the gallery owner, where did they go to school? Yeah, like, does he have a master's degree? Or, you know, you either <laughs> like it or you don't, right? It's preposterous. So, you know, and William would say, well, okay, that's all well and good, but surely the gallery owners want to have, you know, vanguard artists who have gone to the universities and yeah. such. No. Gallery owners are business owners. I mean, they're into it because they love art and they love the craft and, yeah. and, and the ideas that the, you know, that the artists that they represent showcase. But at the end of the day, they have to pay their rent, they have to pay their electricity, they have to pay their staff and advertising. Yeah. They need to sell artwork. And so if they see an artist who's got beautiful quality work that they think that their clientele is going to enjoy, they don't care about the degree either. Uh, so, and I'll tell you one more thing. I served on, when I was in graduate school at New York Academy of Art, I served on the accreditation board. Uh, we were coming up for review uh, for accreditation oh. for that school. And I got to see behind the curtain what goes into accreditation, what those standards are. Yeah. And they had nothing to do with craftsmanship and skill and job placement and all the things that any normal profession yeah. other than arts would hold dear. So I don't want that degree. Uh, we're kind of the anti-accreditation. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's wonderful that you offer that. So we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back and continue talking about like all the wonderful aspects of uh, being creative and how we can learn to and participate in all this. So I'm Nira Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy, so stay tuned. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Hi, I'm Nira Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy, and we're going to continue our discussion with Glenn Kessler. And Glenn, um, I wanted to ask you, um, can anyone be an artist? Um, like, can anyone come to one of the many classes that, that are offered, and do you need experience? Like, tell, tell us about that. What a great question <laughs> yeah. to ask. I think a lot of people kind of uh, resign themselves to not being able to do art because they don't already know how to do art. You know, I think art is absolutely teachable to anyone, and I've seen that, you know. We've seen that in the classroom time and time again. People who swear they can't uh, draw a stick figure, and when they receive the proper instruction in the right order, they, they really can. No, so I we don't have to be born with it. No, I, I think that's a myth. And, yeah. and that myth, uh, this is a kind of an unpopular thing to say in some circles, but 
I believe that's a myth that's been propagated by the art world. They're trying to weed out 90% yeah. of the population from competing with yeah. the gallery artists and such. But no, I mean, you wouldn't say, oh, you can't cook, you know, because yeah. you weren't born with it. You can't learn a new language because you weren't born with it, uh, that you couldn't go into this profession or that profession. Um, art's something that definitely talent plays a role. But the way I like to think of it is talent is where you start, but hard yeah. work is where you end. And sometimes you don't know you have the talent. Like, for instance, uh, my husband husband's aunt, who's in her mid-80s, suddenly um, started drawing. And uh, she, I think her, what she was into was like some kind of primitive kind of drawings. And, and, and just suddenly, like, they started being shown in galleries, and she's selling them. And, uh, you know, was, she only started in her mid-80s, and she never, ever picked up, like, a paintbrush or a, a pencil or anything to draw ever. That's fantastic. And, and just, like, in the mid-80s, I suddenly started doing it. Well, so. and, and art <laughs> is one of those things that you can pick up really at any time yeah. in your life. I mean, it's not she, racquetball. You can do it, you know, into your yeah. 90s, or, you know, whatever you want. But she never even knew she had the talent. You know, like, a lot of, probably many people walking around mm -hmm. with that that they may not even know, you know, so they should come and explore it, right? you got to take a <laughs> chance. you gotta, you got to put a toe in the water before you know if you can swim. Exactly. So some of the people that have gone through the program, like what are they up to? Do you know, have they, are, are, do, would we know their names? Are they in the area? Well, I hope you'll start to know those yeah. names, actually. That's our goal. Um, yeah, we've, we've got some incredible people. I mean, almost everyone who graduates from our Master Artist program uh, has the skills to be able to build a professional practice. But there are, you know, two artists that maybe come to mind. I'd love to share yeah. their sure. stories with you if I could. Um, one is an artist named Meredith uh, Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S. And, and Meredith is someone who, uh, for her thesis work, for you know the, the work that she was developing to define her professional practice, mm -hmm. she wanted to speak about politics, things that were very important to her. And that's something that's very important to me as a teacher, is that our students are speaking from the heart about things that are meaningful to them. Uh, so they're not just making pictures, they're really putting themselves on canvas, and, and um, Meredith wanted to, to dabble into politics, and the first piece that she developed in that series was about as subtle as a sledgehammer. It was a picture of Donald Trump, bright red, angry face with newspaper and, and magazine clippings uh, lambasting him all, all in the background. And I, I said, well, this, this is not going to change any opinions. People who uh, identify with you are going to say woo-hoo. People who don't are, are going to turn their nose and say, well, forget this. And I said, if your goal is really to change opinions and, and temper mindsets, then we have to be a little more subtle. Well, what we did is we figured out a way to take some of the language. This was around 2017, so in the Trump-Clinton, uh, um, you know, inaugural or the uh, um, uh, election season, and she took some of that rhetoric that was coming out of the Trump campaign, uh, anchor baby, the, the very hurtful language, uh, you know, bad hombres, a, a six or a seven, talking about a woman's appearance, and she took those terms and she personified them. She found people in her life who. He was talking about friends, family members. Mm -hmm. uh, you so you, know, got, you uh, helped her express with. herself in a in a in a better way. Well, yeah. And then know? she yeah. she ended up doing these kind of beautiful refine what she's portraits. Doing. You know, so for anchor baby, she found her her niece's uh, um, uh, kid who was so beautiful in her Sunday dress and painted it. People would see the picture, and immediately connect with that child. What a beautiful, yeah. lovely child! And then they'd read the title, yeah. anchor baby. So you really want to evoke emotion. Absolutely. That's what you help them yeah. figure out how to do that. Absolutely. And another artist uh, is Isabella Martyr. Uh, and Isabella, and this really also speaks to the fact that our program is three years of part-time uh, work. Isabella maintained throughout the entire three years her practice as an oncologist, a full-time late-stage cancer doctor. Uh, she was saving lives in her yeah. daily life, and then on the side, working to become a master portrait artist. By the end of her three years, her artwork, and she had never painted and drawn before the program. Oh, really? Never painted and drawn three years before you know we started, and by the end, she was producing national portrait gallery uh, level artwork. Um, but the real kicker is the subjects that she was painting were her patients. Aww. She was asking them to choose their favorite outfits, style their hair, how they like, to choose backgrounds that had meaning to them. Aww. So again, she's spending her working uh, time at, at her um, oncology practice, saving their lives, extending their lives, and, and, oh, and providing joy, and then providing immortality in her, in her off time. 
Wow. What's her name again? Isabella Martyr. That's M-A-R-T-I-R-E. You'll be hearing about her, I think. Wow, that's so beautiful. What a beautiful story. And it's so beautiful that she's doing it and what she's doing. It's well, we're doing more special. than just teaching there, I think. We're changing people's lives. We're giving them voices for things that they didn't know that they had deep within them that they wanted to say, emboldening them, giving them confidence, and uh, you know, just, just doing, I, I hope, yeoman's work to bring out that creative spirit. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So what's the most unusual type of uh, uh, class that you offer, like something that's not, maybe not be uh, painting, or is that, like, do you offer, um, I don't know, sand art? I don't know, like there's so many different kinds of art. <laughs> well, Compass Atelier is focused primarily on painting okay. and drawing that more traditional yeah. craft. But at Artists and Maker Studios, yeah. there are all kinds of activities going on. Yeah. Uh, any of the resident artists are free to use their studio spaces or rent yeah. larger uh, spaces within the, uh, the art center to run their activities. And we do have uh, those who run classes on fiber art, paper art, oh. jewelry, goldsmith, uh, all, all kinds of different uh, uh, disciplines. So the best thing to do would be to, you know, tune in to Artists and Makers on the website, yeah. uh, you know, which is artistsandmakersstudios.com. That's a lot of S's and S yeah. at the end of every one of those. Uh, or follow them on Facebook or Instagram. So, so people can just, just come in and have you seen anybody that, that's come in and been inspired and signed up for classes and just... Has that's one of the reasons that I also love being yeah. in an art center like Artists and Makers. A lot of uh, my students will go uh, on and, and rent mm -hmm. studio space and nurture their creativity at Artists and Makers. And then a lot of the Artists and Makers uh, artists who might be working in a different discipline mm -hmm. say, huh, look at that painting class over there. Or a painter might say, oh, look at that jewelry class over there. And that cross-disciplinary you know, kind of uh, feedback is just so beneficial, I think, for nurturing and building uh, the creative spirit. Yeah. And, and having those outlets. And I know that there, there's other types of classes being offered, um, you know, like pastel painting. And what are some of the other classes? Yeah, Compass Atelier, I run uh, a whole range of classes. Yeah. Pastel painting is a very popular uh, class. Uh, that's my second favorite medium oh, is after it? oils, I think. Yeah, pure color onto the onto the paper. No pre-mixing on a palette. You're just working with that I've, raw color. I've tried to do it. I, I know my daughter loves it, but I always feel like I'm just pushing too hard or I, I guess you teach people you how to do it. You should come take a class. Yeah. <laughs> I plan on it. I plan on it. <laughs> And, and you saw there's uh, the uh, painting, oil paint, uh, pastel, uh, what, what else? So. We do drawing uh, as well. We have, uh, you know, some old master methods that we teach, yeah. uh, a, a Renaissance painting technique where one glazes in the style of Leonardo, uh, a Baroque painting class where we work from dark to so light. So who teaches all those? Most of the classes are taught by me. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I teach about 40 hours a week. Wow, you're uh, very you know, versatile. Monday through Friday, absolutely. Well, I always thought that it was kind of odd when I was in art school and they were asking me to know how to take a drawing class, a painting class, a sculpture, a printmaking class, but they were all taught by different teachers and they were asking me to know all of them. Well, what I try to tell my students tacitly is you can know them all, so that's why I like teaching. But we also bring in visiting artists. Uh, we bring in really high caliber, internationally renowned uh, painters and, and drawing artists uh, for workshops. These are usually two to seven days in length and mm -hmm. these artists can come from as far as uh, New York, Tennessee, California, and even abroad. Oh, I love that. So you, the, uh, people can uh, get exposed to uh, the actual artists that are, um, you know, high up in their field. And, Absolutely. You know, Not and, only are they learning the techniques yeah. that those artists use, but connections are made. Uh, friendships are made. Yeah. Uh, many of our artists develop long-term relationships. In fact, one of the students who attended a, a workshop with, uh, with a master artist from New York, Stephen Assail, she became his administrative assistant. She now oh, wow. orchestrates all of his workshops and she gets to go and study with him, uh, you know, up in New York constantly. It's, it's just fantastic to see those relationships nurtured. That's wonderful, and it's, it's great that people have the opportunity to, to do that, especially in our area. That's really wonderful. So, uh, so please give us your website again so that people can you know, reach you and find out all the exciting stuff going on. Absolutely. <laughs> We're at thecompassatelier.com, and uh, I'm also available on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. I have a strong uh, Facebook uh, presence working on Instagram. 
Instagram. But, Great. Uh, yeah. so, so let me ask you, uh, since we're talking about art and all these different artists, like you being an artist yourself, like who, like, who is your favorite artist? Oh, like, my what, goodness. What do you enjoy? It's like choosing my favorite child. Yeah. I can't do it. Well, you know, I don't really have a favorite artist, but I think some of the things that I look for, the qualities that I look for in an artist are combining their technique their craftsmanship, right, with a deep and meaningful concept, as well as having personal relevance. Those are the things I look mm. for as I teach, and those are the things I look for in painters. So, gosh, an artist as realistic, perhaps, as Rembrandt or Caravaggio or Vermeer, or as abstract as Philip Guston, the great post-abstract uh, um, expressionist uh, painter. Uh, I love uh, all comers, all different uh, different shapes and styles of, of right. art, from realistic to abstract. Yeah, they're all great in their own own separate way. That's wonderful. So uh, I, th I thank you so much for being my guest today. And. Uh, thank you, man. And uh, you've been watching Happy and Healthy. I'm your host, Nira Berry, and stay tuned for my next segment of What's Good to Know. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Nira Berry, the Happiness Coach, and your host of Happy and Healthy. And as part of my series on success at work and in life, and really at winning at life in general, I'm going to talk to you about creativity and creating art. And whether or not you're actually painting or whether you're maybe even writing a poem uh, or sewing, that's all really part of c creativity and creating something. And when you're doing it, you're really fully engaging yourself into something. And this really reduces your stress hormones and really boosts your endorphins and releases those happy hormones. And so whether or not you're either actually creating something or you're observing art, this really makes you feel good. And so I really, re really recommend to my coaching clients to spend more time being creative and even observing art because this really is very relaxing. And especially if you're creating art, it really helps build your self-esteem because you're actually achieving something that you can actually see. And, and really, even if you can't do that, just go to art galleries or Broadway shows or even like your kids' show, and you'll see that it really boosts your happiness. So I'm Nira Berry, and you can reach me at info at And uh, you've been watching Happy and Healthy, and so I hope you're having a happy day.